It's time for Florida State basketball. This is the Leonard Hamilton Show. Brought to you by Coca-Cola. Coke Zero Sugar has real Coke taste with zero sugar and zero calories. Try one today. And by SunTrust, the official bank of Florida State Athletics. And now your hosts, Gene Deckerhoff and head coach Leonard Hamilton. Hello and welcome to the Leonard Hamilton Show. Today we talk Florida State basketball. Here we are toward the end of January and uh, the heat in the ACC is hotter and the temperatures outside are cooler. Welcome to our show, Coach. It's been chilly in Tallahassee, <laughs> but speaking of chilly, it's chilly all over the country. No doubt about that. We have a little cold spell coming through here that, that's obviously bringing snow and ice, uh, places that are not accustomed to it. And pe the people don't even have equipment to uh, the ice, the streets, and in the cars, so I think we're in for a tough winter. It's amazing how the schedule plays out. Number one, we play two games on the road. We play at the two coldest venues. I think, well, Syracuse might be a little colder, but at Boston College, and then this weekend we go to Virginia Tech, the coldest places on the planet to play <laughs> basketball, but at least Dr. Naismith invented a game you play indoors. No doubt about that. Uh, I don't worry about the, the venues because we're inside. But playing four games in eight days has been a little challenging for our players. Florida State takes on Syracuse at a dandy, a double overtime thriller at the Tucker Center. Then we go on the road to Chili Fiend Town. Highlights of Florida State versus Syracuse and Florida State versus Boston College. In between the highlights of those two ball games, we'll have a chance to go shopping with Brian Angola and a couple of his Florida State basketball friends. That's on today's show. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Leonard Hamilton Show. There's nothing like playing a home game in the ACC. Home court advantage, and uh, coach, you need every bit of that advantage when you compete in the ACC. Well, there's no doubt that the, the league has gotten to the point where you have to be ready to play, and every team's capable of winning. It doesn't matter where you're located, whether you're on the road or home. In the game against Syracuse, <laughs> it was a very hard-fought game by both schools and the game, the game probably could have gone either way. Florida State's uh, Fiondu Cavangeli has really developed into a nice little perimeter shooter. Hasn't but the most important thing was the penetration they pitched. Uh, Brian found him and made a great pass to him. He got an uncontested stand and jumper. Steal by C.J. Walker and he goes coast to coast and he shoots with a, he's a natural left-hander. He shoots with a right. Watch this play again. Well that was, our team did a very good job of, of forcing some turnovers and we were able to get out in transition and with each turnover forced 19 turnovers against Syracuse. Long range jump shot and uh, P.J. Savoy, that's what he does, Coach. No doubt about that. We're going to miss him for another week or so. Uh, at least we hope that he gets back real soon. Yeah, injured his knee and uh, he's out for a couple of weeks. Coach, this particular play paid huge dividends for us. Kamaji with a career day. Well, K Kamaji against their zone defense, uh, the way they play it, they give you certain things on the floor and it was very easy for Kamaji to play in this game. He's still developing. He's still trying to get back on top of his game. He's not quite 100% yet. You know they got the zone. What a dish by Brian Angola. Nice little drop pass. Well, uh, Syracuse will concede certain positions on the floor, and they, if you get the ball into the high post, they, they, they'll let you have that pass, but most people have a center in there. And you put Angola in there, he makes a good play. He shoots the outside shot, distributes to the big guy inside. Another assist for Brian Angola. Angola leads the team in scoring with 24. One of his eight assists in this ballgame, a career best. Well, he was very, very important in this game, and he made great decisions with the ball. In the second half now, the Florida State builds a little bit of a cushion, Coach, but no lead safe in the ACC, is it? <laughs> Absolutely not. When you play against uh, teams uh, of this caliber, they always have players that are very capable uh, of getting hot. Anybody play the zone better than Syracuse, Coach? No doubt about that. They have the, they wrote the book on zone defense. Uh, they have been doing it for years, and it's very, very effective. Florida State very hot from outside, 11 of 32 in the ball game. The bench bunch cheering on the Seminoles. And I like the gold uniforms at home, Coach. <laughs> I just like the victories, <laughs> regardless of what uniform we have. <laughs> Chris Camaggi, 23 points. He played a career high 34. Of course, he played a double overtime game in Egan Syracuse. Nice defensive stop there. We're getting out in transition, and uh, we all know that uh, uh, that's a follow up by. <laughs> By, by, I think that was uh, okay. That Phil. was Phil, and, but just taking the ball to the basket strong. But you see the Syracuse seven footer. He blocked that shot, and no shot is safe in the ACC. Pascal Chukwu, Chukwu is his name. Here's a nice jump shot, soft touch, almost when the ball leaves his hands. He knows where that ball's going to go. <laughs> 
I wish that was the case. I think he he makes he's doing a very good job shooting the ball from the perimeter. There's court. that guy we're going to miss, Coach P.J. Savoya. He's just a natural born shooter. Isn't he? Trent Forrest gives you some quality minutes here. He's playing the point and the off guard, and he attacks he attacks the basket. He has a nice little flurry here in about a minute and a half. Well, he did a very good job on the offense for him, but he was very valuable with us for on the defensive side. He did a very good job defending, doing a very integral part of the season. Yeah. I didn't mean the game. One of those 40-minute guys for the Knowles, too. He's an underhanded dish. You don't see that very often. but uh, That was a great pass. I mean, it's, it was crowded in there. Uh, Angola made great decisions with the ball. Here's the lob and the alley-oop. That paid huge, huge dividends for the Knowles coach. Right down to the wire now, Syracuse. And, boy, watch it again. Slam dunk. Come on, you. 23 points, coach. Well, he was in a position uh, there where he was able to make good plays. And that, this is a big shot right here for, for us doing the, as the game was winding down. Unfortunately, no, no lead is safe in the ACC. Phil Kofer with the 16-point game made two of three. Two of that four, was a tough shot. Was, Tyus you know, Battle had a career game against this guy. We thought the game probably was uh, sorted away. And normally in that situation, if it gets under five, it gets down to five seconds, we normally would, would foul it. But he took the shot so quick. We, could, we couldn't foul him. He knocked the three down and put it in overtime. Yeah, he, he almost stepped on Jim Beheim's toes. He was so far away from that <laughs> basket. Coach, in the first overtime now, we continue to attack that zone and a nice little teardrop layup. And the, 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 it's, again, it's a basket for basket. Hey, we can't close the deal in the first overtime. Why don't we play two? <laughs> well, it was a tough game for both teams. Yeah, Florida State had the last shot here, and it's got to be a little bit off target. We'll go to the second overtime, first over, second overtime, or two overtime game uh, since uh, we played Wake Forest three seasons ago. And uh, we had luck there, and we're going to have some luck here. That's a, that was a big pass and a big time layup. God, Lee, I, I was very impressed with uh, CJ's uh, uh, awareness to, to get that ball to feel the transition. Now you get a little bit of separation now in the second overtime, and uh, coach, we had we had fresh fresher legs than Syracuse had in the double overtime. Didn't we? <laughs> we made we made some good plays, no doubt about that. We kind of we were able to extend the lead a little bit, but believe me, I felt very uncomfortable because the buzzer went off. Basket for basket in the first 40 minutes, then the first overtime and the second overtime, Florida State gets some separation coaching up. Who would have thought against his own defense, Florida State would reach the 100-point plateau, slam dunk in transition, Syracuse is out of gas, and the Knowles are going to reach the 100-point mark. Here well, they, the had, they had a couple of guys foul out, yeah. them, one of their main players, and we were, able to, we were able to close the game in a good fashion and get a very important home victory. Four Seminoles and double figures. Trent Forrest, you saw with that slam dunk finish with uh, 11 rebounds in the ballgame. Coach, we shoot. Well enough to win, 40.2% against their zone defense. Well, I thought that we shot the ball very well, and I see where Syracuse actually shot 47% from three. Yeah. They shot better than we did. Yeah, that was Tyus Battle making most of those baskets for Syracuse from distance. Florida State prevails 101-90. to Knock off the Syracuse Orange and get ready for a road trip to Boston. Up next, a shopping spree with Brian Angola and his buddies from FSU Basketball, and we go on a holiday shopping trip. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Leonard Hamilton Show. We go shopping today on the program. And, uh, Coach, uh, just before the holiday break, we're going to play a basketball game. Then the kids are going to have a chance to get out of town and enjoy a little bit of a holiday respite. And, but before doing that, we have to take some youngsters out and show them a good time. <laughs> well, uh, I hope someone bought me a gift. <laughs> <laughs> The partnership that we have with the basketball team at Florida State is one that I'm tremendously appreciative of. I can't tell you how excited I am that we were able to come out today and have the kids have the opportunity to shop with Florida State basketball players. Uh, I would just say it's just a great experience just for us. I feel like it's more than basketball. Give them all the gifts that they actually wanted just to be able to give it to them, just to make them happy and just see the smile on their face. I think that was just the best part of the whole thing today. How was basketball goal? Basketball goal. Well, I'm, I'm really happy to, to put a smile on the little kids. And when I was younger, I always wanted to like up and get with, with my family and stuff like that. And now, being the guy that brings the smile to those guys, it makes me really happy. This one? He sucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hello, everyone. This I need one? some girls. 
Seeing like kind of those raw models that we see playing basketball and television and coming with us to go buy Keith and stuff, that's that means a lot seeing the smile on the kids and this this holidays. Tell me what you got. Are you scared? A uh, remote control car, gun, two K eighteen, some gloves, and a football. Tell me you got and the basketball court. Yeah, put that in your room. So just to be able to see some of the players that they get to see on TV in person and interact with them, shop with them, is something that is unimaginable. Uh, probably when we was playing one-on-one -on -one over there, playing one-on-one -on -one with the basketball, I didn't expect them to be that good I mean, already as a kid like that. I just enjoyed them being able to see some things that they really wanted to have and then knowing that over the Christmas break that they'll be able to enjoy those things and play and be kids because all kids deserve that, that opportunity. Welcome back to the Leonard Hamilton Show. We're talking Florida State basketball today. Good to see the kids out uh, enjoying a little holiday shopping spree. And Coach, I don't think they got you a present. I don't. Maybe a maybe a ticket to Boston. I don't know. Huh? <laughs> what, what they say, the, the presents in the mail? It's in the mail. That's, that's my story, and I'm sticking with it. Uh, Florida State at Boston College. We had won six in a row over the Boston College Eagles, and they hadn't forgotten that. And on their home court, they're a tough out, Coach. This is a very good basketball team. Well, they got off to a good start, and then... Uh, they're a much better basketball team than what I think people realize. They beat a very good Duke team. They had a shot at the buzzer to beat Virginia on the road. Uh, uh, they uh, led uh, uh, Clemson. The score was tied with uh, under a minute to go. They, they've come up short, but they were much more prepared for us. They got off to a good start. We were, I thought we were very sluggish at the beginning of the game. We picked it up in the second half, but it was too little too late. Maybe as good a backcourt tandem as the Knowles will face in uh, Bowman and Robinson for the Boston College. They beat number one Duke, as you mentioned, Coach. They, they battled Virginia right down to the wire. And at home, they were a particularly tough out. Florida, we didn't get enough of these shots at the ball. No, no, we were, we were just slu sluggish. There's no doubt about that. We didn't play with the level of energy that we had played with against, against uh, uh, Syracuse. I was very disappointed. Uh, we the only thing good about it the season's long we got to find a way to overcome it and still a couple games on the road good to see number 14 back in action he missed the Syracuse game coach if he was available late passed the protocol and uh, ha had a very good performance in front of his mom well he did a very good job for us there's no doubt about that we just had a couple spurts where we just came up short and they made us pay every time we faulted didn't get enough of those did we no no we just we didn't they deserved to win. We had a hard time stopping uh, their two top players, and uh, we didn't get enough of those drives. It was a very, it was a tough outing for us. Uh, they deserved to win the game. They, they played much better than we did. Say basketball is a game of runs, coach. We've heard that all of our lives, and it's also a game of droughts. We had a long drought just before halftime, and they got red hot early in the second half. Built a big lead. Well, we have not established a real good interior. Uh, offensive game all year long obviously we're not having Chris like we thought we had and we we've, we've been a little slow to do that and it, it showed up in this game without having an inside attack and then not shooting very well from the perimeter it, it came back to bite us well CJ Walker continues to do his thing had 19 points in this ball game Terrence Mann a after coming back after missing the ball game finished with a game high 21 points and nine rebounds and uh, just, just, when you get down 21 on the road, it's tough to come back. No doubt about that. It, it requires you to expend an awful lot of energy, and for whatever reason, this is not one of our most energetic games. But uh, we learn from it. Uh, we're going to grow from it. Uh, we, get, we respect the fact that every team is very good in the ACC. Now we got to go find a way to upset us some people. We just saw Terrence Bam make a free throw. That's one thing we did very well in this ball game. We made 10, 16 of 18 free throws in the game. Well, that was that was uh, probably one of the very few bright spots in this game. They just we just had, had a hard time stopping their their their, their players. Uh, Robinson and and and, uh, and Robinson had an exceptionally good night. We had a hard time uh, guarding him. He had 19 points. He and Kai Bowman both had 19 points. 38. 38 of the 81 Boston College points. C.J. Walker, 19 points, but he also had a nice night distributing the basketball. He had six assists for the game. We didn't get that. We cut it. We cut it and made it uh, respectable. But it, it, we took it took a lot out of us to get to that point. 
we are willing away with the lead. If we'd have had some of that ability, some of that accuracy early in the in the game, hopefully we, we would have been able to keep avoid getting uh, in such a, a deep hole. But here, once again, you got to give them credit. They did a great job uh, uh, in every possession. Uh, Boston College deserved to win the game. Even with tired legs and a quick turnaround. We played an afternoon game against Syracuse that had to fly to Boston, long trip, two and a half hours to get up there and then play uh, a, a, a game on a holiday weekend. Coach, we outscored Boston College 50 to 40 in the second half, so it looked like we, we gave it the effort to come back, but just too tall of a hill. No doubt about that. I thought our guys gave tremendous effort, uh, with much better effort than we did in the first half. And um, I, You don't want to make any excuses. I just think that the, the the schedule makers with four, four games in eight days, we just didn't have the, in traveling in a Dover time game, kind of hurt us in this game. But overall, you got to give Boston College credit. They were a little hot for us in this particular game. Florida State makes a road trip to Blacksburg, Virginia to take on the Hokies of Virginia Tech. We'll talk about the week ahead in just a moment. Hi everyone, I'm Jacob Russo. Alongside me is Phil Kofer, senior on the men's basketball team here at FSU. How you doing today, Phil? Pretty good. All right, so Phil, you've been with Florida State for four years now. You know, you've been here a while, you're a senior. So uh, I guess the question is, why did you choose Florida State in the first place? Uh, actually, it was a long process. Just, you know, when I first came to Tennessee uh, with Kwanzaa Martin from Cal, uh, I mean from Tennessee, he went to Cal, but it was, it was a hard process. When I first got to school, I didn't know he had left, and I got a text on my phone. Everybody was like, kept asking me, where are you going, where are you going? And I was like, what are they talking about? But just from that, uh, Kwanzaa just called me. He just told me everything that was going on, and the next thing I know, my recruiting opened, and Coach Ham called me, and it just went from there. I took a visit up here, and just, you know, I had a great relationship with the coach, and it just, you know, went from there. <laughs> All right. So uh, off the court, I guess, what would you say is your favorite part about being here at Florida State? Uh, really, it just feels like a family, man. Everybody just all connected, and just basically seems like uh, you know a whole type of different brothers around. You know, having a, a you know a special father, another second father. What I would say for Coach Ham, just just uh, you know the atmosphere here. So, and you're one of three seniors on the team. It's you, Brian Angola, and Brandon Allen, and. What is that like being a veteran, being an old guy now on this team that has a lot of young talent? Uh, I think it comes with you know pros and cons. I think sometimes you know people look to you uh, for some things. You're like I don't know what to do there either sometimes. But you know just bringing that leadership. I think uh, everybody looks up to you know me, Brian, and Ba. Uh, you know in practices, no matter if it's just you know simple stuff off the court too. And I think that's what comes with you know uh, being a senior. So what is, uh, I guess, the relationship between you guys as a team in the locker room? What's it like inside that locker room? Uh, like I've been saying, man, it's just that brother type relationship, man. We do pretty much everything together, even, you know, going to the movies, eating out together, just, you know, little things like that. And I think that's what helps build chemistry for teams. Right. And you said that um, Coach Ham is like having a second father, you know, uh, what's the relationship like, I guess, with the other coaches on the staff? What's that whole dynamic that you guys have? Uh, they're like more fathers too. I talk with them pretty much all the time. I talk with all the coaches a lot and just, you know, sometimes they even go up there just to talk about simple life and stuff like that. Well, you know, what would I do after this? You know, what if basketball stops and stuff like that? And I think that's what's a, a great thing to have these coaches here for, you know, us and me. So on the court now, what's it like, I guess, preparing for a home game? What's some of the stuff that you do to get in the zone to get ready for a game? Uh, first for me, I gotta have my music. <laughs> but uh, besides that, I kind of you know just get some extra shots up. You know, like I said, been saying, talking with the coaches. You know, simple stuff like that. You know, just remember the game plan, and just really my, my game plan before games really simple, not really too much. <laughs> yeah. What's on your playlist? What kind of music do you listen to? Uh, I listen to a lot actually. Sometimes like I'm a Disney fan, so I even you know listen to Disney music stuff like that. But mostly I listen to a little baby. All right, awesome. Uh, that's all we have. That was Phil Kofer. I'm Jacob Russo. If you'd like to find out more about the men's basketball team here at FSU, you can check out Seminoles.com. Coach, it's uh, about that time to say goodbye, but before we do, quick trip to Blacksburg, play Virginia Tech, and then Wednesday night, Coach, Georgia Tech comes to town. Well, we have, we'll play two home games uh, next week, Wednesday uh, and, and Saturday. 
Uh, hopefully we can get still one on the road, come back home and get us a couple of victories and, and, and get our streak going again. Yeah, the battle of the two techs, Virginia Tech, Georgia Tech, and then Miami, a big rivalry game coming up. They beat us down there. We got a whole serve at home. That's coming up this week at the Tucker Center, Wednesday night, 7, and on Saturday, Miami, Florida State, 4 o'clock. We'll see you at the Tucker Center. Coach, good luck against Virginia Tech, Georgia Tech, and Miami. <laughs> we need some luck. That's our show for today. Thanks for joining us. Go Knowles. This has been the Leonard Hamilton Show. Brought to you by Coca-Cola. Coke Zero Sugar has real Coke taste with zero sugar and zero calories. Try one today. And by SunTrust, the official bank of Florida State Athletics.